Have you ever wondered why nearly 1,500 planes crossing the Atlantic each night all follow virtually the same path? These aircraft fly remarkably close to one another separated by just 40 miles horizontally, 25 miles laterally, and sometimes a mere 1,000 feet vertically. Picture it as an aerial highway at rush hour, with metal giants weighing hundreds of tons zooming through the darkness in a precisely choreographed dance. This aerial choreography exists because crossing the Atlantic still presents unique challenges. Unlike flights over land, oceanic crossings lack continuous radar coverage since air traffic control relies primarily on ground-based systems. This necessitates a carefully structured route system called the North Atlantic Organized Track System, which ensures adequate separation between aircraft when direct monitoring isn't possible. Pilots must report their positions every 14 minutes using complex calculations of longitude and latitude, creating an invisible infrastructure that keeps passengers safe. Orchestrated Ocean Crossing the Atlantic Crossing operates under the watchful eyes of four key control centers that meticulously coordinate each journey. New York Station handles the initial departure space. Gander manages the Western Atlantic. Santa Maria covers the Medocean region. And Shanwicka, clever combination of Shannon, Ireland, and Prestwick, Scotland guides aircraft into European airspace. This international collaboration creates safe passages for thousands of nightly journeys across one of Earth's most challenging environments. Despite this careful planning, incidents occasionally occur. In February 2019, a Boeing 787 countered an intense jet streak that accelerated the aircraft to 801 miles per hour, approximately 200 miles per hour beyond its normal cruising speed. The plane broke the sound barrier and came dangerously close to other aircraft in the vicinity. Such events highlight why these flight paths require such meticulous coordination. But this raises an important question. With the entire sky available, why do planes consistently follow such a narrow corridor? The Japanese discovery that changed aviation, the answer lies with a Japanese meteorologist, whose work was initially overlooked by the Western world. Between 1923 and 1925, Wazabiro Ushi conducted nearly 1,300 observations of high-altitude wind patterns. When he announced his discovery of what was essentially a powerful river of air flowing through the upper atmosphere, few outside Japan paid attention to a mistake that would have tragic consequences. During World War II, in a devastating application of this knowledge, Japan launched approximately 9,000 silk hydrogen balloons, carrying bombs into this west-to-west -west atmospheric current. Around 300 of these weapons reached North American soil, and in 1945, one claimed six lives in Bly, Oregon, when a Sunday school group unknowingly encountered an unexploded device. Following this tragedy, the U.S. military finally acknowledged the importance of what they named the jet stream, a discovery that would revolutionize aviation and weather forecasting for decades to come. Nature's high-speed aerial rivers. Jet streams are remarkably fast currents of air that circulate around the planet in both hemispheres, generally flowing west to east at altitudes of 30,000 to 40,000 feet, precisely the cruising altitude of modern commercial aircraft. These atmospheric rivers form through the interplay of two crucial factors, Earth's rotation and the temperature differential between warm tropical regions and cold polar areas. When north-south thermal flows meet the Coriolis force created by our planet's rotation, the result is a powerful eastward current. These narrow bands of intensified wind typically measure just a few hundred miles wide with a thickness of less than three miles. Their speeds average around 100 miles per hour during summer months, but can accelerate to an astonishing 200 miles per hour in winter. American commercial pilots began factoring the jet stream into their flight planning as early as 1952, recognizing that riding these tailwinds when traveling eastward significantly reduced flight time and fuel consumption. The practice quickly became standard creating the flight patterns we see today. Climate crisis in the skies. The jet stream isn't fixed in position it meanders north and south depending on seasonal variations and the sun's position. Every morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, air traffic controllers locate its position via satellite and incorporate this information into the day's flight plans. This system has functioned reliably since the 1950s, but scientists are now observing troubling changes that could threaten its stability and safety. A landmark 2019 study from the University of Reading revealed significant alterations in the jet stream between 1979 and 2017, 
with notable increases in vertical wind shear over the North Atlantic. This phenomenon where wind speed dramatically changes with altitude creates dangerous. Clear wear turbulence that's invisible to both pilots and radar systems. Researchers describe these changes as one of the single largest anthropogenic changes to have occurred since satellite observations began. And they trace the cause directly to climate change and carbon emissions. If countries fail to take decisive action, severe turbulence is projected to double or triple by 2050 to 2080. Navigating an uncertain future, the implications of these changes extend far beyond uncomfortable flights. With transatlantic air corridors already operating with precise spacing requirements, aircraft separated by just 40 miles horizontally, 25 miles laterally, and 1,000 feet vertically increased turbulence threatens the stability of this delicate system. Some experts have even speculated that continued increases in vertical wind shear could potentially lead to catastrophic incidents if proper precautions aren't taken, while immediate risks remain manageable. The long-term outlook suggests significant changes to how oceanic flights are planned and executed. Even as the aviation industry recovers from pandemic-related disruptions, this climate-driven challenge will persist for decades. It's potentially affecting flight frequencies, routes, and ticket prices. One certainty remains. The journey across the Atlantic will become increasingly turbulent. What are your thoughts on these changes to our atmospheric highways? Have you experienced severe turbulence during a flight? Share your experiences in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to Minecrafted for more fascinating explorations of our world. Hit that like button and ring the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos.